Hello, welcome back to Cycle One Science Experiments. We are on week 13 and starting a semester on earth science. Um, Psalm 24, one says the earth is the Lord's and all that in there is. So again, remember as we're doing these experiments that we are creating a spark of wonder and awe for these kids to see how God has created all things to work together um, for his glory and for the earth to work in its fullness. Doing two things today, two experiments today, both are tutor demonstrations, but the kids will be able to be hands-on a bit. Um, they do take time, so I will try to talk fast um, to give you a little bit of background, um, but also to tell you what's going on. So again, review the scientific method. You've got your purpose or question, background research, hypothesis, procedure, analysis and results, and then your conclusion. So the first experiment that we are doing, the purpose or the question are, tell me about the seasons. So who can tell me about the seasons we have here on earth? Um, what are the seasons? Why do they happen? Where do they come from? Does anyone have any guesses or hypotheses? Um, well, we're gonna learn today where the seasons come from. And so in this experiment, um, you will have two pencils, which tutors already have. You'll be given a ball of clay, um, which you will try to form into a ball shape. Um, mine's kind of wonky, so it's easier said than done. Um, and then, um, as I've done this, I feel like as a visual person, it is more helpful to write a little N for North, a little S for South. And you're also gonna draw a little line around the middle, see if anybody knows what that is and that is your equator. So you're gonna have your earth, the ball here is representing the earth, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, and the equator. The equator divides our earth. It's an imaginary line that divides our earth into a northern and southern hemisphere. Okay, who can tell me? So our light here is gonna represent the sun. So does anyone know, first of all, what is this pencil representing? See if anybody knows. Your older kids might know. So the earth is on an imaginary axis at a specific angle. Um, now, if we were at a sharper angle this way or this way, we would be thrown off into space because of the gravitational pull from us to the sun and from the moon to us. So, God has created us at a specific angle that allows a temperate temperature, I guess a moderate temperature, to allow life to develop um, where we are in relation to the moon and this um, specific angle um, controls the tides, helps control our weather, and controls again our temperature, which we'll see today. So the angle, the very angle and the imaginary axis that we're at is specific and has a purpose and reason. It is not by accident that we alone are the planet that has this specific position in space. Okay, so that's the first thing. You got your axis, you got your earth. Now this is our sun. For the sun, um, do we rotate around the sun or does the sun rotate around us? Um, and challenge to learn more about the different theories that led up to our current understanding that um, we rotate around the sun. Just like the other planets, we orbit around the sun. Um, so first thing I would identify, so here's our sun. I put a little dot for here we are, I'm in South Carolina. So here I am in South Carolina and the sun is shining it's a beautiful day. First of all, um, do you think it's warm on this day or do you think it's cold? Why do you think that? Well, where is the sun shining? It's shining right on me or slightly on me. So what season do you think we're in? We're in summer or spring, probably summer right now. So as I'm on this hot summer day, the earth rotates on this imaginary axis that it's in. And this allows us to have day, where the sun's shining bright, and then night, where I'm over here now, and the other side of the earth is getting sun. And so now I'm sleeping, it's night, and then it's day again. It's night, and then it's day. So our rotation 
Um, this happens in a 24 hour cycle and this creates our day, day and night. So here we are again, it's summertime. It's hot here in the Northern hemisphere. What do you think the Southern hemisphere is feeling? Well, they're feeling cold in winter down there. As we rotate, the important thing as you do this little rotation is that you keep the pencil at this angle. So don't try it. Our tendency is to be like this, but that doesn't work. So keep it at this angle. You're going to rotate to the other side of the sun. And now, which hemisphere is having more heat or light? Well, it's the southern hemisphere. Now, the northern hemisphere, where I am, is cold. Um, and so we are not getting direct sunlight. Um, even though we're still rotating over here, we're getting more indirect sunlight. So it's colder in the northern hemisphere and hotter in the south. So now we are in winter and fall, and the southern hemisphere is in their spring and summer. And then we rotate again here. Don't turn your pencil. <laughs> we're back to spring and summer. You can have someone hold this for you. And again, remind the kids, obviously the sun does not need to turn. Um, it is one big bottle of fire, but for our purposes, we have to turn our flashlight. So, um, so that's how seasons are. So our rotation around our axis creates 24 hours in our day. Our orbiting around the sun takes how long? 365 days. It takes a whole year to make it around the sun. And in that progress, is why we have um, all four seasons, depending on where we are in that orbit and how direct the sun shines. A couple cool facts you could talk about for a minute are, um, so when we are here, here I am, that little dot in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so we're in summer in the Northern Hemisphere. There are parts in the extreme North and the extreme South that experience. So right now here would be an example of a, a time in Russia or in the um, Arctic where they have what they call polar days where they get 24 hour or close to it days of sunlight. They get very little dusk or darkness at all. In the uh, other extreme, you have polar nights here in Antarctica where there are weeks where they go with no sunlight um, because of the position of the earth to the sun. Um, and so that is a pretty extreme experience. If you've ever lived, um, even in Alaska, they have sh really shorter days or really long um, days um, of sunlight or darkness. So again, that's all because of our position to the sun. So that's experiment number one, days and seasons. Second experiment is a different kind of topic but still in earth science, our question is, how does soil, rocks, and minerals, how do they layer up under the ground? Um, another question is, what is mining? And um, have you ever heard of mining? What are types of mining? Well, today we're gonna talk about something called placer ore mining. And so background research for this to make sense at all, you have to understand what placer is, what ore is, and what mining is. So mining, obviously a lot of kids may know, it's digging or looking up things under the ground, um, trying to find treasures under there, you're mining. What are things people mine for? Well, they mine for gold, they mine for coal, they mine for gems and um, minerals and diamonds. And so they mine for these things in various ways. Placer, I'll give you a decent definition, means a glacial or alluvial um, deposit of sand or gravel containing eroded particles of valuable minerals. So when you hear the word placer, think water. So it's usually near water, a stream, a river, ocean. Think sand and gravel and dirt. And then think within that sand and gravel and dirt are eroded rocks. Um, and in that eroded rocks are minerals. Um, or is simply the definition of a rock that contains valuable minerals. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for ore. We're looking for the treasures, the valuable minerals. Um, so in placer or mining, you're usually near water. Um, it can be that wind and glacier deposits have deposited other places farther back from the water's edge, um, but usually near water, and it's looking for those treasures and minerals in the midst of the sand and the dirt. 
So for this experiment, we'll have our little jugs. You're going to, we have our jugs, we have our um, soil, and we have our paper clips, which will demonstrate, which will um, be an example of the treasures that we're looking for. So you're gonna fill your jar, about half full. That's um, mimicking our stream or our river. We're then gonna put in the valuable metals. These are ore, the rocks that contain valuable things. Um, and then we're gonna put in, I thought because my jar again is a little smaller, about a teaspoon or so um, of dirt. This is soil, um, but again, it's representing the sand. Um, so I put about two teaspoons or so in there. The sand and the um, gravel and everything else. So in weather or in world, in nature, there are storms, there's wind, there's all of that. And what happens is the sand and the water and the minerals all mix. Well, what do you think is going to happen to those treasures that I'm looking for um, when it has time to settle? Are they going to float and come to the top so I could see them floating around the water and just scoop them up? Um, or are they going to sink? If you think they're going to sink, why? And so this takes a few minutes to separate. I have one here who's been separating for a few minutes and you can kind of see what's happened here. Um, it's hard to show on the screen. Uh, I can't really tell them. Um, but some of this, um, we kind of have murky water here. This is swampy water. Um, not really, but it looks like it. So the metals, the paper clips, the kids will be able to observe, have settled at the bottom. And the dirt layer has primarily settled on top. And here's our little stream still flowing by and flowing by. Some of the heavier dirt particles, as you can see, have settled to the bottom. Um, and they may contain some more of the minerals and all that we can't, we can't see as well as the metals. Um, so what does this tell us happens to those treasures that we're looking for along a sandbar or along a creek or river? Do they float on top or do they settle beneath all of the sand and dirt? They settle beneath. Um, gravity and the pressure of wind and the water and other dirt coming on top of it from erosion pushes it down and down and down into layers until it finally settles on a, on a rock layer um, of the crust of the earth. And so uh, this one's starting to separate beautifully for us. And so as you're waiting for it to settle, you may even do this one first, actually, as I'm thinking about it. Um, so you can come back to it after you've done the earth one and it'll be even more clear so you can see uh, more detailed. So um, this is what was used in um, like in the California gold rush. You've heard about that in our history. We did cycle three. Um, and this is when you've ever been panning for gold on vacation or something like that. This is placer or mining is what you're doing. The techniques the materials you use are not nearly as extensive or hard as like if you are mining down into a solid mountain or a solid rock. Um, and so different tools and techniques can be used with the same goal in mind that we're looking for treasures. We're looking for those minerals and rocks full of gems and um, stones. So this demonstrates how in nature, the heavier metals like um, gold, platinum, um, even heavy gems like diamonds, um, the things that we're looking for, how they um, settle in dirt and sink lower and lower until they hit that hard rock layer and then they can be mined um, later on. So I think that's um, that's all with that. So have fun again as I'm doing it. Do the, Oh, and you can kind of see the metal shining over here. And that's our little gold flex we'd be looking for. So um, do the placer ore mining first, then do your earth one so that this can continue to separate and you can see more clearly after you've done your earth one, come back to it um, and see that. All right, have fun.